Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Grutter here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to cover how to add a tooth um, to an edentulous space for orthoplanet. Now, you might be thinking, well, oh shoot, mesh mixer. I don't want to learn mesh mixer. I'm going to use mesh mixer. Well, we're not going to use mesh, mesh, mesh mixer. Um, this video, I'm just showing this for an example um, for what we're talking about. So anyway, um, this is the case. We've got this missing tooth back here. You can actually plan it without, and you can just, you know, print the models, make sure you put them at an angle that you can print them. And then, uh, sometimes we'll do that and just basically fill the space with silly putty to block out the undercuts, make our trays and retrieve the silly putty for the next set of models. Um, that's an option, but, uh, placing a tooth in here can be very, uh, convenient in the sense that now we can simulate for the patient what it's like to have a tooth, it gives them a chance to maybe see, Hey, no, maybe I do want to place that implant. Uh, or it also lets you just kind of plan the space a little better. Um, now be bear in mind, if you're doing a case like this, when you add this tooth, you can move that tooth throughout treatment. I know that some people, they think that they can't move it cause it's a false tooth, but that's not the same. It's not a bridge tooth. It's not, um, uh, an implant. It is not a fixed tooth. You can move it all you want. You can, you know, kind of merge teeth into it and do not even worry about IPR. It's a phantom too. So you don't, it doesn't have to mean it has to stay still. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to show you how to add a tooth here all in blue sky plan, merge it to the model and get planning. So let's go into blue sky plan. So the first thing we need is a set of models and I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop this mendib. Well, I'm going to select them both and I'm going to drag them into the software. You don't, doesn't matter where you hover it. It's going to open us up into the, um, model editing module. So we're going to let the software, you know, see these. And the first thing it's going to want to do is it's going to want us to, um, align them. This isn't really important. Um, there's a downside to aligning them and a, an upside. Uh, the downside is it's, you're going to lose the coordinates. Um, so if you wanted to bring in the models again, they wouldn't line up the same, but in the end, I think it's going to be, you know, easiest to just go ahead and align them. Uh, again, if you have a concern about something more sophisticated then don't align them, but uh, anyway, so say continue to alignment. This is just a chance for follow the directions. Hold the shift button to mark, mark, mark. And there it is. We can say continue and then we can kind of adjust it from here. We don't have to be perfect. More than anything, the reason I want to go ahead and mark them, and when we get in the ortho module, we're going to be realigning them. Um, this, uh, the software automatically does that for us uh, when we mark the teeth. But the reason we do this is so that um, when we're working, our head stays centered in this environment, well, somewhat centered. Um, if you don't, sometimes it comes like way back here in no man's land. Um, I don't know. It's probably not a big deal, but, um, yeah, it's bothered me in the past. So go ahead and align it. Now what we're going to do is, uh, the very the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, close this model. I don't need the upper visible, but I do need to have it in here. It is critical that you bring the upper into this environment. Um, because I've just moved the alignment. Okay. So I'm gonna have to export both of these models and when I'm all done. So the upper one is just kind of hanging out so that it knows to stay next to the lower. So that's why you just want to make sure you're preserving that relationship. Had I not done it, um, yeah, it's going to mess with your ortho plan. So right now I'm going to go ahead and come over to model manipulation and I'm just going to click on this button that says close model. If you don't have these panels visible, uh, you can go to the panels up here and click on model manipulation click on this button and it's going to give us a closed model. It's going to be rough borders, whatever. Don't worry about that. You do not need to trim this up unless you're using this merging, uh, for a different purpose. You might want to clean those up, but for ortho, don't worry about it. So I can go ahead and hide, um, whichever model I want. Uh, I do need it closed moving forward, but for right now, it doesn't really matter which one I'm playing with. I'm going to come up here to this plus tooth button, which is add a tooth. And I get all these different libraries up here to pick from. In this case, I'm going to use, um, yes, uh, Bastian de Luge, de Lage. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I apologize, but I'm going to use his teeth here and I'm going to pick on this one and I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going to click right where I want it. Now it's not going to be right where I want. Cause look, it's high. Who cares? I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm going to line it up. It doesn't have to be perfect here. Okay. But we're going to spend a little bit of time just getting it, you know, roughly in the right spot. We can use these little spheres to, um, 
scale it wider or narrower. And then we're going to make some little fine tune touches to it in the crown and bridge module in a minute. Um, they're not entirely critical, but here's one of the things. When you have a missing tooth, it's very easy to be left with little open embrasure spaces. So that's okay, but um, it is going to make your life easier if you can avoid those. Um, so you can do that by kind of scaling the tooth, but that can get a little bit, you know, uh, can really mess with the dimensions a little bit. So I'm just going to leave it here, maybe tilt it in a little bit. And good enough. Okay. So you can play with it however much you want, but that's going to work all right for me. Okay. Okay. So now we have finished in the crown and bridge, mo uh, the um, model editing module for the time being. And so we're going to come over to the crown and bridge module. You can either come to the modules or come over here and we're going to come down to here. When we're in the crown and bridge module, it's going to look a little different. And now we have some extra tools where we can go ahead and uh, manipulate this to to fill in that embrasure and to do some other things if we want to. So I'm going to click on this and I don't need to move it. I've already done that, but I'm going to click on uh, local geometry transform, which is going to allow me to grab and pull things however I want, or I can use the global geometry transform. And if you look, there's actually a basically a three by three by three um, grid of little nodes. And you probably can't see it in this video very well, but there's a little node right in here. If I grab that one, I can bring it right over to fill that embrasure. There's not really a visible open embrasure in here. If I want to, I can hide this model and turn on this one instead and see from the underneath. Okay, So that can be a little bit even more helpful. And we can kind of tuck things in however we want. We're going to use the smooth tool in just a moment. Um, but you can do whatever you want with these. And we don't have to make this perfect. But there are going to be some advantages to take it, spending a little bit of time here. So last but not least, I'm going to come over to the smooth tool. And I'm going to turn the strength up. I've already done that. And I want this size to be pretty big. And then it, even though it looks like it's covering the whole tooth, it's really just covering the bottom, but a lot of it. And I'm just sort of smoothing it back a little bit. Again, this is a false tooth. doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to make the transition smooth um, and make it so that my tray doesn't have to go too far down. Technically, you could have the tray go right across the middle of the tooth, and it's not going to matter. But, um, but yeah, so a little bit of time doing this is going to make you know your life moving forward a little bit easier. All right. And if you want, occlusion is going to always be off during treatment anyways, but if you really want to, you can come in here and now I can come into those tools that I was using and actually use the add and remove. And I'm going to dial the size down for this and hold the control button instead of the shift button. If I do control, it adds to the tooth. If I use shift, it subtracts. I'm just subtracting anything that sticks out. Really, again, doesn't matter because we're, you know, we're going to be in a liner, so occlusion is going to be funky anyways. But if you want to do that, that is uh, up to you. Okay, so I think we're pretty much concluded what we need to do as far as, you know, uh, positioning that to scaling it, making sure the embrasures are closed. And actually, I didn't complete. Oh, because I was messing with it a little bit. Me trying to show you what to do. And I accidentally, I'm gonna, this is one more tool I can actually grab an area and pull it. Okay, so I got rid of those embrasures. Notice these little in jets in here. The more you get rid of those, the easier your life will be moving forward. But I'm going to show you how to get rid of that if you still have it. And you're going to see in just a minute what that looks like. Okay, so we're done. Uh, I've spent more time than you might spend adjusting this, but I want to show you kind of all the little tools you could use. So at this point, what we're what we need to do is. I'm going to turn back the solid, the closed model. We need to make these into one model because right now, although it sits on top of here, they're still two separate entities and the ortho software is going to really struggle to make a margin on some teeth and then know how to treat this tooth. So we need to generate, you know, we need to use what's called a Boolean operation to merge these two into one solid model. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go back into that 
um, same panel. And right here on your screen, this is this little carrot right here is probably pointed this way with no little tools here. Open it up, and now we have some Boolean operations. We can do a Boolean intersection, which basically el eliminates everything except what is coexisting in both these spaces. It's pretty rare that you're going to use that. Difference would basically cut out the tooth from the model, make a Pontic, an ovate Pontic site. But what we're going to use is the union. Okay, so we're going to between we have to pick which models we're going to use the the model stone model whatever that's what it's called because that's what the surf that's what it, it, the software made it called and we're going to say plus we want to include this right mandibular first molar so we're going to merge these two things together i'm going to click apply and there we go so now i can turn everything off and here's this new model with everything merged okay Remember those little spaces I said inside um, that you could right in here is where it gets pretty, you know, a little bit dicey in here. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a minute. But anyway, we've got a model. We could technically export this model right here and start to work in the ortho module. But this next step is going to make your life easier if you go ahead and do this. And what it is, I'm going to smooth the margin a little bit. I like crisp margins for the software's ability to marginate or to segment out the teeth. But in particular, down here, it's going to struggle because it might literally put our segmentation line inside the model trying to find all the way in those little creases. So we're going to get rid of those creases. How can we do that? Well, we can come back to the model editing module. There's lots of ways to do this. But the simplest way, in my opinion, is we are going to... Well, first, let's turn everything else off. Oh, I apologize. I can't do that in here. All right. My mistake. Crown and bridge. And we are going to... This is the new model that has everything. This is the active model. And we're going to come to the smooth tool. And I'm going to... Oh, too much. Control Z. Undo. Strength. Let's dial this down to, say, 5. And I'm just sort of quickly, and I'm even dial it down to, th we'll say, three. And I'm just clicking these areas, okay? Just so the software has, you know, I still want it to have an easy margin to follow, but I don't want it to have to get all the way down deep in there because that's going to make things difficult. That's all there is to it. All right. Now, technically, the model editing module has the ability for me, to, if I needed to, if you had an air issue, you can export this model and then re-import it and then use the model editing module basically to delete this area and then to um, um, uh, repair it so that there's no chance that it falls in. Um, I think this is going to work fine for us, but I'm telling you that. I'm not going to show that to you because most of the time no one's going to need that, and it does require you to export, re-import, export, re-import. It's, it's a little bit of bouncing around. So point is, here's our model. We can now use this in ortho. And how do we get this model out? Technically, it's... Um, well, we need to go. We need to come up here, and we need to say export data. So we've got this model. We of course want to export. We also want to export the maxillary anatomy because that was that one we kept around just in case we would need it down the road. Okay, I'm exporting as an OBJ. You can always change to STL if you want. Uh, OBJ is now the default. It's a better file format. Make sure that this box right here is export separated files to a folder. You want separate files. You don't want one file. Otherwise, it'll be both the maxillary and the mandibular arch as one. So I'm going to say, let's call this uh, modified models. And it's exporting. So now I've done with what I need to do. I'm going to come over here and click X, get out of here. You can save or discard. You don't need to save it. And now I can go to ortho, and let's go to aligners, import models. And let's go to these modified models and click on, well, these models. 
Click OK. And now we're going to have one model, the, this will tell us it's maxilla, and then we'll have the mandibles already closed. So what does that uh, affect moving forward? Well, it does mean that when you get to um, the next phase, when you're marking the maxillary teeth, you're gonna close it like normal, but the lower you don't need to close again. Blue Sky Plan already closed it. If you'd closed it in another software, I, pr I recommend reclosing it in Blue Sky Plan, but if you have, if you closed it in Blue Sky Plan, you don't need to reclose it. Just the way, the way that it closes is going to be uniform with the way it's expecting it to be closed. So anyway, I'm gonna end this video here. I don't, you know, you don't need to see me do the ortho module. I've got other videos that cover that. But now you know how to add a tooth and be able to bring it in um, and mark some teeth and it will allow it to be segmented and work within your aligner workflow. All right. Hope this video helps. Make sure you um, subscribe to the channel if you want to see new updated videos and whatnot as I uh, come up with them, uh, up, uh, come up with the new workflows and whatnot. And then uh, also check out my website, baringreaderdds.com, where I kind of keep track of all my workflows and uh, try to keep things a little better organized. And then, of course, you can check me out on face, Facebook or Instagram, baringreaderdds. All right. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Bye for now.